Good morning, gardening friends. Today is Sunday, June 4th. And I'm just sitting here watching the birds in my front yard. It's still cool, at least in the shade. It's about nine o'clock. And I've been working in the front yard quite a lot this week. So I thought I'd show you at least a little bit of the changes going on here and how things are growing and progressing. I do like the way this bed is turning out. The purple Tradescantia is doing well. I do like the look of the salvias. The white and green caladiums are actually white Christmas. They have a little bit of pink in them. I don't know why, but they do. And those are bearded iris. They used to be a different color, each clump. However, some clumps thrived and some clumps died. And so I've just moved them around so they're kind of all a mix right now but they're the only bearded iris. For some reason, this is one location that they seem to like. Here you can see Elise, E-L-I-S-E, -E, a caladium. I planted these probably about five or six years ago. They do make it all the way around this little back garden or side garden. Some are larger than others. I have a few more in the backyard I may dig up and move around. For some reason, this one comes up short. I'll fertilize it and hopefully that'll speed things up and make it grow the same size. This one, oh, just noticed a little bird eating away under there. I cleaned my bird feeder out, so a lot of seed was dropped. But the caladium in front of the bird, I won't go any closer is uh, stomped on a lot when I go to get at the bird feeder. These ferns were planted, I guess, by birds. I have them in the backyard and they just somehow appeared back here. This clump and that clump and I liked them where they were so I've moved some others and put basically in the four corners this clump is the driest I guess because of the tree being there and it doesn't do really well there it just dries up over here you can see my Italian black fig has got plenty of fruit. I counted a dozen figs and as soon as I see any change of color of the figs, I didn't plan on getting figs this year, I just planted that this year, but I did order from Walmart a netting that I will drape over that tree uh, when the figs start getting a little riper. It's going to look like one of Joe Kane's widows. <laughs> Little Mardi Gras reference. Here's my one of my courgettes. Oh, it's got little flowers coming at the bottom. And a cucumber over there. And here's another seedling that I had planted. I had planted three hills originally of the courgettes or zucchini and for some reason this was the only one that sprouted other than that first one. But you don't need a lot of zucchini plants to make it. I don't eat that much zucchini. I kind of like it just with stewed tomatoes. It's also good batter dipped and fried but then just about anything is good when you batter dip it and fry it. I cleaned this <coughs> bed out, excuse me, this week. It had been a couple of years since this bed got weeded thoroughly. 
and uh, I like the way it came out. I took like two big trash bags of stuff out of here. Now you can really appreciate the cassia, this plant. It will get probably about five or six feet tall, and I will let it now, now that it has the room. I thin back this Nandina. I'm not crazy about this particular Nandina being here. However, it does provide me some screening right now from the street. Of course, with the construction going on, there's no traffic at the street right now, which is why I've been cleaning this bed up. It's a good time to work out here without cars whizzing by all day. This is a limelight hydrangea that I planted a couple of years ago. It might actually do better now that it's getting more sun and it's not uh, competing as much for water because the big oak tree has been taken out. Taken out. I left this one crinum lily. Oh, I see a Nandina coming up next to it. Not anymore. It had two other lilies next to it that I bought from the botanical gardens that supposedly were crinums. I bought them probably about 10 or 12 years ago. And this was the second spot I moved them and they were beautiful lush green plants, but have never bloomed in 10 years. And I figured, I don't care what you are, I'm sick of looking at you. <laughs> so I got them away from the crinum. The crinum does bloom. And I actually dug that out of a ditch by the side of the road many years ago. And that's one of the ones that survived. Here you can see the Laura Petalum is doing nicely. That pot has no bottom. That's one of the hacks, I guess is what people call them nowadays that I got off of YouTube. If you have large trees in pots, if you cut the bottom out of them, for one, it anchors the pot in place so it's less apt to walk in terms of someone stealing it. And number two is the roots can get down into the ground and grow quite lushly. These bananas are doing really well. You can see where I had cut them back to here last winter and they sprouted back which is unusual for bananas to do normally they sucker like this actually I see I have two sprouting down there it is entirely possible that these two bananas might have fruit I have had fruit in past although it was in the backyard uh, unfortunately uh, once when they fruit they die so the only ones that will remain are the little pups to grow to the side. There you can see the Montbrucia that I planted back there. It's still got green to it. It's not going to do much this year. It really was planted too late in the season to do anything this year. Everything here is growing nicely. Now's the time you have to really watch those chewing grasshoppers because that's what they do. They love the uh, amaryllis. They don't touch the lily of the Nile, Agapanthus. They'll crawl up on it to sun themselves. And here in the little potager, things are doing well. These beans have apparently caught, although I lost one. I did have a couple of pots that had two in them, then I left them. But the ones that are in the ground now are doing really well. They're not wilting, and that's a good thing. The okra does wilt, and so I watered everything thoroughly last night. Here's an eggplant with something stuck in a leaf. Four o'clock is still doing well. I do like these dwarf 
butterfly bushes. They're getting a second flush of flowers. They do look like indeed they are going to be dwarf. The only complaint that I have about them is strictly, I guess from a mechanical point of view, when you water them, they splay out and open up at the top. They do fluff back again, but it is kind of annoying if you water something and it flattens itself out. This has really done well here. Sage. The only thing I really use that for is dressings or stuffings. Tomatoes are doing fabulously well. They do taste really good. Of course, they're small. Here's my Thai basil. It needs a little pruning of the flowers. An eggplant. Or, oh, since this is a potager, it's an aubergine. You can see back here, this one's doing much better. Ginger, that's the ginger I got just from the grocery store. Supposedly you can make a tea from the leaves of that, so we shall see. But that's about it for the day. It's been really dry, so I'm having to water about every day or every other day. But so far, things, everything is growing. My Australian tree fern is doing really well. I'm tempted to cut some of these bottom leaves off to open it up, and it would look more like a palm. However, it is getting nourishment from those bottom leaves, so I'm going to let them get as much as possible until they become a nuisance for this African iris next to it. And back in here, it's really shady this morning. I do like the borrowed view of my neighbor's hydrangea. It is really pretty. And I moved this pot around slightly because apparently the chartreuse here grows <laughs> twice as fast as all of the others. But it is a pleasing combination, and it doesn't appear to be too bug-eaten, although I do see a few holes here and there. But that's about it for today. It's beautiful out. So I hope you all get to get out in your gardens and just enjoy. There's more to gardening than work. So have a good day.